Okay, so um, our usual chair for the advisory design panel is not here today. So can I get one of the advisory design panels to volunteer cheering? Great, thanks, Tony. Okay, so um, I guess we'll call the, the meeting to order. This is the uh, review of 103 and 113 Jensen Avenue East. And uh, to get things going, we'll uh, look to adopt the minutes of the previous meeting, um, which I think you've all seen. So. Could I have somebody move that we adopt the, uh, the minutes of the previous meeting? Ivan? I think Ian, that might've been a second over there. <laughs> okay, so we can, uh, we can proceed with uh, the review and with your presentation. This button and then when is that better? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, thank you for having me here. My name is Carl Binder with Saywell Contracting. I am the agent and construction manager for the owner. Uh, unfortunately, the architect could not be here on such short notice, um, and she's asked me to present on her behalf. So I'm going to do my best uh, and run through the project, um, but in no way, shape, or form am I an architect. So the project site is uh, just across the road on Jensen. And um, we have frontage also on Craig. And it's two parcels that we are uh, proposing to consolidate and put on one building. It's also adjoining a lane in the back, and that's what we are proposing for access uh, to the on site parking lot. So I'll move to the site plan. You can see from the lane, we have one access into the parking lot. And right now we are proposing 29 residential stalls. Uh, and when we kind of get into the, the bylaw proposed um, versus uh, what's in the bylaw, I, I, I can talk a little bit more about the cash in lieu and commercial parking. Uh, but right now the site area itself is 20,000 square feet. We are proposing a lot coverage of 37% and the proposed FAR of 1.65. The main floor is comprised of commercial units, the bicycle storage, uh, garbage enclosure, um, and access to residential. We tried to provide access to the residential on Craig as well as from the parking lot. Um, you'll also see from the stairwell, there's access from the parking side, um, but then not from the Craig side. And then there's access to the stairwell on Jensen um, that doesn't go all the way back to the parking. Um, we kind of looked at that from a loading perspective with commercial. We really don't know what or who the tenants are going to be at this point in time, um, but we're just trying to, to stay flexible to um, Hopefully market to, who knows, maybe, maybe it's, it's uh, doctors, um, it could be a small coffee shop or some form of retail. I should note that we have provided a loading stall off of Craig, and you can see that kind of up by the waste area there. Um, I know that was a, a bit of concern when we were going through this development. We're trying to maximize uh, as much commercial space as we could on the ground floor, uh, but also put the site parking in. It, it 
made the most sense for this project uh, feasibility wise to, to do site parking as opposed to underground. Uh, and then try and look at the, the uh, amount of stalls we could get on with the amount of units. Um, so as I continue through the presentation, you'll see that we have allowed 29 stalls, um, which corresponds with 29 units. So the loading area I think is very important. And we thought about where to put that. Right now that, that was the best location. And we put some screening off of the lane. So as we go through uh, onto the second level, this is where the residential would start. Uh, the residential is directly over the commercial as well as some of the balconies are gonna be over the commercial. Uh, and it also goes over some of the parking, uh, the site parking. One thing that we wanted to provide uh, these residents in this uh, development were really large balconies. Um, there's, there's a reason we went with 29 units. Uh, 29 is kind of the magic number before we have to start looking at uh, different amenity spaces within the building. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. It, it made the most sense to, to try and maximize 29 units, uh, but then to provide them as large of an amenity space, an exterior amenity space as possible. Uh, so I, I think, in my opinion, these balconies at 175 square feet, 230 square feet uh, are quite large and will more than likely be enjoyed by the occupants. Um, you can see here just a, a quick uh, summary of how many one beds we're talking about, which is 14, uh, three one bedroom plus dens, and then 12 two bedrooms. So this is just a quick rendering to show you what it would look like from uh, the Jensen kind of corner. Um, we, we did try to soften the corner itself and, and we have radius brick, um, much to my chagrin, but I think it's, it's nice just with the site triangle and, and trying to soften that corner up a bit. Um, we, we also you know, tried to emphasize the commercial with the brick uh, and then utilize a hardy board and batten up above on the residential and softening up the soffits with a bit of a wood, wood soffit. Um, I'm also a large fan of, of pickets for railings. Um, I know some people aren't, they like to see it a little bit more covered or worried about what's gonna be stored on balconies. Uh, just, just for the sense of having fresh air flow through pickets is, is kind of why I like going that route. Um, it also is a little bit more cost-effective. This is a view from uh, Craig. I, in no way, shape or form am I suggesting we're going to put a flower mural there. there. So that is more or less just an artist rendering. Uh, I think that, that I know in talking with the owners, they, they were hoping to maybe put something a little bit more um, significant. Let's say something that's historical, um, showing a, an old, picture or mural of Parksville or, or, or something um, that has some significance, not, not just a bunch of flowers, but that was more or less just proving the point that we were hoping to put a mural there, um, which, which takes a little bit away from that waste area space and, and it hides the mechanical electrical room, et cetera. Uh, you can see also the, the commercial space that's on Craig there. Um, we've got lots of, of glazing and hoping to make it uh, just really nice and accessible for pedestrian access. So these are the materials we're proposing. Um, that fiber cement board, like I mentioned, we've got white and charcoal um, as well. The brick veneer is charcoal. And then the, the wood soffit is uh, actually a, a wood looking metal. Um, and it's just for longevity and of course where we're at. Um, here are a few elevations that just kind of uh, show as well the uh, different uh, uh, elevations from west, south, and, and the heights and how they're going to look um, or, or match with kind of the average grade and, 
and from Jensen and Craig themselves. You can see there is a bit of a grade difference um, from Jensen down to Craig. And the main floor basically grows in height as we continue uh, north on Craig. From the backside, uh, again, you can see that height uh, where on the east elevation, the waste room uh, access is going to be. Um, it, it, it is a bit large, uh, but I think that plays into the uh, Jensen and, and how that main floor kind of works with Jensen and the grading there. Um, you'll also see we put in the stairs on the north elevation to access those CRUs from Jensen uh, with the railing. And access it. So I, I do think, and I know that that's going to be a, a bit of a struggle, is just kind of loading and how those CRUs are going to work. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure, again, who the tenant's going to be, uh, but I think that that's something that we'll have to take into consideration. Uh, here's that section cut through, uh, basically showing our, our main floor and then our residential above. You can see we've got the three levels um, and that third, that fourth level, third level of residential is the variance that we're requesting. Uh, here's another view of the rendering from Jensen. Uh, and then from the back lane, we tried to put some screening in, some landscape screening where the parking lot is. Uh, for, for obviously, obvious sakes of, of softening um, just the view of all the cars. And, and I think it, it's also gonna potentially provide some screening and security uh, for the residents' cars. Um, just, just that little bit of a buffer there. We also put the PMT in the back. Uh, I think that's where the power is currently. Um, I do know when we get into a little bit more of the design, we will have to work with BC Hydro uh, and where they're gonna wanna see that but that is where we're proposing it for now. So here is uh, where we're, we're talking a little bit about uh, some of the variances and, and what the bylaw requirements are versus what we're proposing. Um, you can see max height is, is obviously the large one, 15.5 um, versus 11. And, and again, I think that that height is, is to accommodate that fourth and third level of residential. Um, but we also have taken into consideration higher parapets to deal with any mechanical screening. Um, and, and so hence a, a little bit higher than um, I think it could be, um, but for architectural purposes. We're also asking for uh, a setback variance uh, to the rear property line and the drive aisle we felt that since this isn't going to be accessed by commercial and just residential, um, we were hoping to vary the 7.5 to seven. And then the zero meter along the south and west property line. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what we're trying to vary there. Okay. Sorry, yes, uh, Kara is our landscape architect. So uh, thank you for that. <laughs> um, and then the site triangle, uh, six meter from parcel line, um, just because of the, the commercial uh, space in the downtown core, um, we, we have brought the commercial and the, the building um, to property line. So that does affect the site triangle a bit. Um, Definitely something to, to look into. Well, I guess I could have went to the next page and, and found that landscaping strip. So uh, yeah. So Eric has done, I think, a pretty good job at, at showing uh, just the height and from the 11 meter uh, at the average grade to the 15.5 that we're proposing. 
Um, and she also mentions that it's consistent with Streetscape 2, allowing four stories, um, and that it's appropriate based on uh, scale and nature of the surrounding developments. Then again, uh, just down below, uh, the rooftop mechanical equipment are, are screened from those raised parapets. Uh, this just shows further that drive aisle, the seven meter. And here is the rear setback. It is uh, an irregular site geometry. Um, and, and we are pulling in from the lane. So I, I think that it's going to be user friendly for the residents. Um, I know we looked at this parking lot in many different ways. And I think in the end, being able to provide the buffer the way that we provided it and the one access uh, is, is going to help with usability. And this is the 1.5 meter landscaping. And then finally, the side triangle. I do have landscape plans next. Um, I'm not sure, Kara, do you want to come on and talk a little bit? Okay, do you want me to get out of the seat or? Thank you. <laughs> As usual, I'm Kara McDonald with McDonald Gray, landscape architect. Um, and as usual, uh, downtown projects, my presentation will be very brief. So just to summarize the landscape, um, the parking and service areas, I, Carl's covered a lot of this, so it might be repetitive, but parking and service areas are screened from the east property line with a 2.2 meter high fence and planting, and a screen from the lane with a substantial planted buffer, so which ranges from 1.6 meters to about three and a half meters. Um, it varies in width along the lane. Um, raised planters with formal hedging and cascading flowering perennials are located at the entrances to the CRUs. One there, 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 and there. Um, so between the street and the public building face, uh, which is requirement from for the street, the streetscape requirement. Um, the level two planters, um, which you can see over here, um, are planted with ornamental grasses, cascading and flowering plants that will provide movement and interest from the street. The north and east walls of the building are screened from the street and adjacent property to the east with shrub and tree planting. So again, and the, the, um, the architecture renderings were actually really illustrated the planting really well. <laughs> so it's a little better than my plan, but so you have screening there and then um, tree and screen planting here for the north wall. Um, plant species as always are selected for drought tolerance, suitability of location, deer resistance. 40% um, of the uh, plants in the planting plan are actually native to um, our area. We have two bike racks located here at the southeast corner, and we provide one um, because there's there'll be lighting un under the roof to, to light most of the parking lot. We have we provided one ornamental light um, at the in the parking lot. It matches. It's sort of a smaller version as was Hearst Avenue. We did um, a smaller version of the down uh, Parksville's downtown uh, street light standard, um, and that's about it for the landscape. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll go around the table. I just wanted to maybe just go over one more time before we start going to individuals that we have five variances. Uh, building height, minimum drive aisle width, uh, minimum distance between off street parking and a property line, increase the requirement for the landscape strip, which seems to be a kind of a slam dunk for a commercial building on the main floor. 
and the site triangle being reduced from six to 1.3 meters. So I think that's partly why we're, we're here to address this because there were variances uh, requested. So who'd like to start off? Tony, I just, do you mind if I supplement that by just Please, saying yeah. that the, given the number of variances and what they've asked to vary, they're actually going through a development variance permit process as well, Okay. concurrently with the development permit. Perfect. I'll start with Ian, you're, you're over there all by yourself, so we'll get you involved. <laughs> Oh, that one. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, the presentation. I think you did very well, considering you, you're doing it uh, paint by numbers style from somewhere else. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, what is the purpose of the development variance permit is that to address the variances that that we are looking at today or is that another variance yeah so the development variance permit will be looking at all of the variances that are represented today so it's processed concurrently with this um, typically when an applicant is proposing to vary uh, building setbacks and building height and or I should say, um, we typically go through a separate development variance permit process as well, which includes aspects of um, neighborhood notification and things like that. Okay. Um, I, I, I was taken aback by the number of variances that were being asked for. And the variances are quite severe. Um, I, in my personal practice, I've never ever asked for a variance of a whole story and i don't know what the precedent for that is but i think that's pretty hefty as a re as a request um generally um, just looking at the overall form and character of a building so I'll, I'll leave some of the variances because we might want to touch on those as we go through um I, I was hoping that the building would respond to the corner a little bit more than it has. There's an attempt um, at the ground level uh, where the commercial is to round the corner, but I guess because the property fits, I mean, the property line goes right to the corner, obviously, um, you want it to maximize that and everything else worked into that corner. So it's very tight. I, I would have hoped that it, it, the building would have responded a little bit better than that. Um, I just find that the, the, the commercial part of the building, um, there's no relief at all in terms of how it sits so close to the, well, it's right on the property line. I, I know that. Um, but in terms of uh, sidewalk, presence and so on, I, I just find it really tight. And especially if we're not, you know, uh, providing any landscaping in that area, um, which in a way is fine, but I'm just wondering about the actual space that we wind up with, the, the sidewalk space, is it enough? Uh, in an urban setting, we don't necessarily need to have masses of landscaping at the ground level where we enter the buildings, in for commercial that is. But I, I just find it um, pretty abrupt for, on on this particular. It's pretty hard, in other words. Um, the other two things, I'm I'm very concerned about the the overall height of the building. The, asking for an extra floor. Um, as we go down to Craig, I 
don't know why the designer chose to highlight the service area in such a manner that it doesn't really respect the rest of the building. Um, there would be nothing wrong with, you know, carrying some of the other materials through on that and some of the, the lines that, that you've set up so carefully on the rest of the elevations, but to, to have it set us be set aside design wise um, and be treated uh, as such a foreign part of the overall design I, you know on on big complexes or any kind of buildings normally we don't draw attention to those parts of the building we we build it in and nobody knows what's in it apart from the users of the building um, so to make it into this special uh, piece of character, which is totally um, not respecting the rest of the building. Um, sorry, that's me. Sorry. So um, I, I think everything's tight on the project, you know, parking's tight the lanes tight. I'm concerned about the height of the fence that separates the lane from the access and egress to the parking. I think it could create a safety issue. I don't see that the, the cedar fence or whatever it is um, needs to be that high. I think it could be much, much lower near to the entrance. So I, I think it could be dropped or not at all, you know. Um, I, I'm not sure what the purpose really is. You know, everybody knows it's a parking lot. So why are we trying to hide it by that amount, you know? Um, a, a low profile wall with planting in and around it would give you the same amount of security or protection because you're not closing off the driveway anyway. Um, and you can see all the cars from Craig, which is, you know, the, the most obvious place to, to be concerned about, you know, in terms of visibility of a parking lot, but they're cars, you know, um, sorry, we, we live with cars and I'm not sure that we need to, to be hiding them. Please do. Is what, sorry? Yes. Yeah. But, but you have landscaping where the residential portion is. Yeah, but I, I think it might even be nicer to look at the resi that, at the landscaping if it's, you know, if it has some massing there instead of a fence that's six feet high, you know. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, those, those are some very quick initial observations. So I'm wondering maybe I can pass this on to somebody else and then I can come back later. Uh, do I have to switch this off now? Okay. Thanks for your presentation. Um, sorry that you have to answer for the for the architect because um, I don't know really where to begin with with the uh, things that I have uh, questions that I have on this project here. And I think it all starts with uh, with variances and in, in particular the height. Uh, it's almost 15 feet of a variance that you're asking for, which I think is really quite something. 
and uh, the reduced drive. So it, it's all driven, all the problems that I see here are driven by actually that adding 10%, 30% uh, uh, more accommodation in the apartments uh, because everything else starts getting squeezed from that point. And that's why we have uh, we have to reduce the drive aisle to get more parking space in, and we we squeeze the building up to the uh, right up to the property line so that you can uh, you can basically get the parking in. And um, and I think that the reduced drive aisles, uh, you know, those sizes were determined for for a purpose for for safety and convenience and for comfort and i don't know if we should really uh, compromise on all of that uh, the off street parking screen this was also determined to soften the view of the parking lot and cars so you know we're starting to give up on that uh, the landscaping strip that is on on uh, jensen and craig Again, it was important to soften the streetscape and give uh, some uh, some softness to 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 the to the sidewalk uh, and the side triangles, which is something that opens up sight lines at intersections and it, it actually creates a feeling of spaciousness. Now, th these are items that are these are there to to benefit the city. And you're trying to get this here to, to benefit your project. And, uh, and so uh, when you ask for a variance, you want to have, you got to trade or something. You, know, you want us to give something, you got to give something as well. Now, uh, the roof lines, um, page 159 of our um, OCP says that uh, slope proofs should be used for mixed use commercial residential buildings. And we don't have that. And the streetscape too, it says four stories may be considered where a community benefit is provided. And I don't see that we're getting any community benefit for that extra floor. You're getting a benefit of 30% more units. I can't hear you, sir. Oh. I think I think what they mean by community benefit is, uh, you know, like we had a project that came here was uh, low income rentals, and that went to four floors because that was a community ben benefit. This is not a community benefit. Anyway, um, we'll go down to, now the entrances to the building as it stands, uh, I find that the entrance on, uh, on Craig is, is really, uh, it's like, a, you don't even know where the entrance to the building is. It's, it looks just like any one of the other commercial entrances. And, you know, the entrance to a building needs to be defined and it needs to be something uh, obvious. And you don't have to go walk around trying to find where the, where the entrance to the building is. In fact, um, the entrance on Craig looks just like the fire escape on Jensen. So, you know, that's, uh, that's a very weak point there. And um, in fact, I wonder why the fire escape uh, on, uh, on the Craig Street side exits into the parking lot instead of onto the street. That's something, you know, from the safety point of view, you want to get people out of the building as fast as possible and out into the street. And it's something that could be done. Um, <clears throat> the corner of Jensen and Craig, I feel should be more of a focal point and that's uh, right now it's just a, a blank wall. It's an opportunity that is, that is missed there. 
um, landscape. Page 160. Uh, in the OCP, planting, paving, and seating is encouraged between the public street and building face. Right? So there's no seating. And I don't know, you have a, you have a uh, picture of a bench, but I don't see any place where the benches are. I can't hear you. That was my mistake to not provide an updated um, cut sheet package. We did have a bench in what the alcove next to Jensen, but with the grade change, the bench wasn't going to work. We need to use that as a ramp. So, uh, so the bench got taken out of the farm. Initially, we had one in here, but that has to be used as a ramp to get into the CRU. So we weren't able to put the bench there. There isn't really other, there's really any other, there isn't really much room for, be one for bench. benches there. We might be right. able to switch out a planter and put a bench in rather than having the raised planter by the CRU entrance. But there isn't any room on the street front, is what you're saying. Getting can, you, can you take your mask off? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, we so could, I'm, we, I'm very deaf and I look read. So, yeah. We could yeah. probably take out one of the planters or on the street frontage to get a bench into the alcove. But here on the corner of Jensen, we initially had a bench in here, but it's it, we need that as a ramp to get up to this um, and to get up to that doorway. So we ended up taking the bench out of the plan. Uh -huh. But we could investigate putting removing yeah. one of the planters out front and putting a bench in to okay. don't, help. don't go away. Okay. <laughs> so um, so there's so there is really no seating at the moment. No. Nope. And all we have along. Jensen are a bunch of puny little planter boxes that yes. are kind of kind well, it's, of sad. I, that's the that's always the struggle with the downtown though, because the, if you look at the streetscape, it's like it's a zero, it's a zero lot line, right? So we don't, and it's always a variance because we're supposed to have the one and a half meter planting strip. So um, it's a little, it's always a give and take with the streetscape requirements but, and then the zoning bylaw. So tell me about the uh, the planting on the second floor. Who's going to look after that? Well, that was that was my, that was my thought. Um, I did choose the plant material is chosen to basically um, have to be maintained once a year, so it will have to be maintained, obviously. But the idea is that what what I planted up there will need to be maintained once a year. That was what I how I chose the plant material. So the perennials will be cut back once once a year, and at the same time they'll do any trimming or anything. But somebody is going to have to get up there with scaffolding or however else to, to maintain that for sure. And, and how are they watered? They'll be irrigated. Hmm? It'll be irrigated. They will? Yep, drip irrigation, probably likely. We'll, we're, we'll yeah. uh, coordinate that with the mechanical engineer. Okay, and then the uh, that little triangle of planting on the east side next to the fence in the bottom. Oh, oh. I think we have a picture. I think there's a 3D of it. There. Okay, that little spot there. Yeah. I mean, is that really practical? Is anything really going to grow in that little wedge of? Uh, oh yeah, yep. Yeah. It's uh, there uh, in there. But those are the and, planting plan has uh, vine maples. Though they grow deep shade. I've got a lovely one on the north side of my house, and it 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 vines, so it's it'll oh. it chases the sun, and it, it'll go up the wall. It'll provide screening there for sure. And then um, our uh, local Oregon grape, it's indestructible. It grows anywhere. Okay. And the other thing that I'm that concerns me is that in the, uh, in the parking lot, in order to get the seven, the seven meters, which is reduced from, from seven and a half meter the drive aisle, it's already encroaching into the one and a half meters we got along the fence. Yeah, I didn't have any involvement in the site plan, so I can't speak to, so, I, I was just given so, that. Was so answer. what I'm saying is that Everything is being squeezed because of this height variance, and and I think the building suffers greatly because of that. One other, one other thing I got for you, okay. I, I googled uh, um, Norway maples because I've never come across a Norway maple, and it said, "Do not plant under power lines." 
it's a it's beside power lines so it's columnar um so in order to clear um horizontally i believe now don't quote me i could be wrong on that. <laughs> uh, I, I always take i do always take into consideration i th i believe it's a it's a, it's a columnar version so it will um oops. so it will um it's appropriate for the application. I will double check that for sure, but I, I'm I'm positive that I am well, always as conscious. As I see the drawing, there's two of them that will be under the power lines and two that won't. They will be beside the power yeah, lines. Those first two there. So that. Okay. Uh, just one sec. I have. Am I going the right way? So I, I, don't, I have no idea how I would zoom in, but the power poles. The power pole is sort of the, uh, so they go, so the, from the right, the first two are, are under, the, under the power line. And like I said, there's many different cultivars and I am, I'm, I'm sure this is appropriate for the application, but I will double check it to make sure. I don't want to get in trouble with hydro. That's my bigger, my, my bigger concern. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not worried about you as much as I am. Yep, there you go. So you can see the overhead wires is the OH symbol. So the trees aren't directly under, they are beside, and they are columnar. So they won't grow into the wires. Um, okay, now accessibility. So in the apartment entrance lobby, you go to that, right, there's, you come in, there's double doors. Then you go out to a single door, and then you go back out to double doors. That, that, that's like, like a plumber taking a two inch line down to a one inch line and back to a two inch line. Right there, you know. And while you've got that, Drawing there, there's a there's an error in the so the columns at, by the handicapped parking. That column is actually on the other side of the parking space, and the same with that other handicapped space, and they kind of sit on either side of the access into the parking lot, which is could be kind of tight there. I'm sorry. Were you saying that these are interfering with access? That, that, that column is on the other side of the parking stall. This one, yes. Yeah. Well, if you look at the elevations and, and the renderings, that's where they are. Okay. So they're. But this, this in no way, shape, or form, though, is we have to we have to do this through a structural yeah, I'm review. Just saying and, that, uh, yeah, it might impact the access into the into the building. The columns, because, because those columns are going to be pretty tight together. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, the. Um, the bike and mobility scooter storage room is about as far away as possible from the elevator that you can get. So anyone that needs a mobility scooter that, that can't keep it in their unit would have to go right outside the building on the sidewalk and around to, the, to those doors and get in there because they can, on the back there's a flight of stairs. So, and that is prime real estate uh, commercial uh, property there. Why would you put a bike storage out on Jensen? It just, you know, it's like an afterthought. No, it's not an afterthought. We, we had the bike storage actually over here, uh, but yeah. that, that affected the commercial unit on Craig. And quite honestly, we thought that the commercial unit on Craig was going to be more important than Jensen. We already have two on Jensen. And so sacrificing this corner, we thought was an acceptable sacrifice to have a CRU on Craig. So there was thought put into that. Well, regardless, I think as an, as an uh, accessibility issue, I think it has a problem. Um, and the parking, the, um, 
so the proposed drive aisles are narrower than the required and they encroach on the landscape strip on the east fence. Um, and I think the drive aisle in a different setup would, would probably work better with two entrances that you could drive right around and go up because um, what I'm wondering is how do you how do you get deliveries? What happens if someone's moving in and out of the building? What happens if you get a cab drops someone off uh, an ambulance? How do they how do they get in and out of that? You know they. Yeah, it's it's a fair question, and in one of our first iterations, we did have an access on this side as well as on this side. Uh, we we just we felt that having that landscape buffer was a was a good compromise. We have no landscaping; it's it's tight, and so putting that there was was the well, decision. That's the thing. So if you put another access, it takes away more landscaping, but mm -hmm. it all comes back again to the. Uh, the number of units that you're trying to get. But, in. but we have commercial space. So regardless, I, I would be going for the same parking stalls to park for commercial. So we've dedicated everything to residential to, to try and resolve that. No, the, um, and the other thing that I think the, so the, uh, the loading stall, and I guess that's for the garbage pickup or is that for? No, it's, it, it, it is meant for garbage pickup, but also for, for loading CRUs or, or who knows what else, yeah. So how, how is the garbage gonna get picked up? It wouldn't that also work better off the lane? Like some guys got, I'm sorry, you gotta answer questions for something you didn't oh, yeah. design, but that's okay. You know, um, you know, I, you get a garbage container, what are you gonna do, roll it out into the street so that the guy can pick it up? No, I, I think the idea was to, to roll it out into the loading stall. Into the loading stall, as opposed to so trying to, I, to have a garbage enclosure somewhere around here or where the PMT is. And it just would be an eyesore at the lane. So trying to enclose it in the building, I think was, I was just trying reason. to figure the logistics of a of a truck maneuvering in there to pick up a garbage container and blocking off the traffic and you know and that street's not that wide there right? plus there's parking there's on street parking so you know it, it just I don't think it's all being thought out very well. Hmm. Um, now. My next question is about the construction. I take it that this is uh, it's wood frame above a suspended slab. Correct. Okay. So the suspended slab is that insulated, and to what level? And what energy saving construction strategies are in place? We haven't um, finalized that, but. I'm sure meeting a step three building code is something that we could achieve. Um, we haven't detailed out the structural slab yet on, on insulation requirements, um, but we will have to meet code. And uh, I know that the owners are pursuing step three on other projects. So I think that this is something that we would follow as well on this one. So on the same note, um... The um, energy saving, uh, I, I was hoping to get some answers here about what measures are being taken for energy saving, because I saw in, in the checklist there, this is that, uh, well, because some of the windows face south, there's some passive solar. Well, that, that's a lot of rubbish, really. You know, you can't, that's not energy saving. And it's, it needs to be, there needs to be some kind of positive uh, attempt at, at saving energy, greenhouse gas emissions, water. Yeah, as I mentioned, step, step three will take care of uh, also window requirements, U values, SHGC. So all of those will be taken into consideration. I don't think we'll have to do triple pane uh, glass. Um, I, I'm doing a number of step three projects right now where we can get a, a U value that uh, works with a dual pane glazing plus solar band films, uh, low E argon filled, 
Uh, so all of those will be taken into consideration for sure. It also helps with the comfort of the occupants inside. So uh, it's definitely what we would be pursuing anyways. I think those are the things we we wanted to hear here, you know, not sometime down the road. Uh, we need to know what steps are going to be taken. And um, and I have to disagree with you about balconies. I, I think they should not be transparent. Uh, I think that people store all kinds of crap on there that especially on, on a, a thoroughfare like Jensen, it will look terrible when uh, they, you know, for light and that it, they could, you could have glass, uh, frosted glass panels or something, but you know, something that will hide the, the mess that will inevitably show up there. And, and with siding, first of all, white is not one of the recommended colors in the OCP. Um, it is also not very practical in this climate, which uh, I think we should really consider. And there's also a little, another little error in the elevations. There, there will be a, a through wall flashing at each floor, so it's not going to look exactly the way that stuff is drawn there. It's going to be horizontal lines at each floor there. So, anyway. My, um, my summary of this is that uh, I'm opposed to the height variance unless it was part of a slope roof, which I think could, within that, you could probably hide some, some residential uh, in there, but that would, you know, if there was a slope roof, that would uh, satisfy one of the the recommendations of the OCP and for the for this area. Um, I'm opposed to the narrow drive aisles for safety reasons and that it encroaches on the landscape strip in the on the east side. Uh, I'm opposed to the elimination of landscaping on Jensen and Craig and I'm opposed to reduction of the site triangle. And that there's no real strategy for energy con conservation. So overall, I think it's the, the problem is trying to squeeze too much accommodation onto this site and everything else suffers as a result of it. And uh, I think it needs to go back to the drawing board height. Okay, well, one benefit of going last is a whole bunch of your points get covered off by everybody else. But um, um, I was um, in agreement with uh, more definition for the entrance. Um, that's something we always have come up here. Um, when people drive up, um, this is very clean and, and tidy and everything, but personally going by in a car, I don't think I would see it. I, I know where it is, but... Uh, Perhaps a, a color difference, or a you know a, a different uh, brick, or something you know, uh, even a different material with a bit of color in it might. Uh, okay. Could I could I speak to the entrance? Sure. I think the way that we had looked at the entrance was that the front entrance is actually from the parking, and, and I know we're looking at Craig from a pedestrian axis, but I, I think that when the residents come in and use their parking and they park, they're going to go to their front entrance in the back, uh, and when visitors come. Uh, sure, they could come off of Craig and uh, punch in the fob or whatever and, and contact the resident to open the door, but I, I don't think that we wanted that to be the grand entrance. So, No, I, and I, I agree, not, not to make it grand, but to just make it better defined, and there's a number of strategies you can use for that, and I, I won't even suggest any of them, but, uh, but I think it's a valid point because, you know, as you say, it's the guests who don't know where they're going. The people who live here all do. Um, the whole matter of the height of the building, I wonder if there's another strategy that you could use that might solve a couple other problems, like just a, a thought as we were talking, uh, could we lop a couple of units off the fourth floor at each end of the L, which would provide a, a, a setback, less mass on the, uh, the upper floor, maybe the ability to do some roof slopes, uh, maybe even an accessible um, 
kind of garden or patio area for the residents of this building. And by taking those four units off, you can take four parking stalls out of the back and you can relax a whole bunch of these setbacks that are going on because there would be three at the alley and possibly one at the residential property next door. So, you know, it would cure a number of things. And, um, you know, I know there's a shortage of housing here. And my first thought is, well, you know, getting some more housing downtown is a good thing. Um, but I do have to agree with the perception here that this is just jam packed tight on the site. And with a little adjustment like that, and I'm not going to talk about the economics of how many units will drive the project to, you know, to make it work for you. But um, that just struck me as a strategy that might work. And they could also be taken off, for example, the Craig and Jensen sides uh, to some degree or, or set back so that the apparent height of the building is, is set back from the road. So yeah, it's still 15 meters tall. There's no question of that, but the perception from the road isn't, isn't that. So I just wanted to throw out the strategy that maybe something like 20, 25 units or 24, whatever that works out to 20 minus four, just as a thought would then set the back alley setback would be cured. Uh, possibly the whole building could be shifted and would provide a planting strip, even though it, I believe it's not technically required. Um, but they are nice. There, there is, it is nice to have some, some vegetation um, along the streetscapes of the building. So I'm just gonna throw that out as an idea. Um, I know the mural was a placeholder, um, but my God, uh, I'm personally not a mural fan, and there's not an awful lot of uh, sort of green design in the building. And I wondered if, for example, that could be a planted wall or a green wall instead of a mural. Um, it's a lot softer. Um, it's not really subject to uh, somebody else doing their own thing over it with spray cans. Uh, I know they they usually are respected, but uh, I don't think that's a theme in Parksville at the moment. And uh, and I'm not crazy about them, so I'm just throwing out my personal opinion. It just looked like a great place. I see green around the perimeter of the second floor, bring it down to the main floor, green wall, you know, um, something low maintenance because uh, obviously it becomes part of that other um, planting situation that has to be maintained. But I think there's lots of them that, that do quite well with just a, a minor drip system. You know, yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I think yeah. that's a, a really good comment. Um, and if we carry the brick through, like Ian had mentioned, um, that's definitely a, a, a hardy surface that could accept a green wall. So yeah, and I guess my my last point would, and it's also been dealt with, is just the corner. Um, I like the the rounded brick. I know it's kind of a pain to build, but uh, I wonder if that could be um, extended more or brought into the building more as a theme, because it is a pretty major downtown intersection, <clears throat> and uh, I think the corner of that building is going to be very visible. Um, so I know you've got rounded brick and I think I can see some rounding on the balconies, but you know, maybe just as a design item, I agree with everybody else that corner could, uh, could stand to, um, you know, to extend that philosophy a little more. Um, and then we've brought this up previously, but there is a color palette, you know, for, for downtown Parksville. And I, I agree that I don't believe white is one of the colors, uh, it being a moist climate, it can get kind of black here and there if it's not maintained. Um, I see it's board and batten. Um, maybe you could review the color palette for, for Parksville and see if there's a more appropriate color than the white. Uh, personally, I, I like your charcoal brick. <laughs> I think that's very clean, modern looking. Uh, and I like the way that it's on the, the main level of the building. Um, See if I've missed anything here. No, I think that's it for me. Um, before we go to Marilyn, who always uh, I like to call on for some comments. Ian, did you have more thoughts that? Uh... Yeah, I, I didn't want to get into um, all the details of the variances because I'm not happy with most of them. <laughs> Um, but when I first saw the building on, you know, represented on, on the drawing, I thought, well, this is actually two buildings. There's a commercial base with one set of materials on it, and nowhere did, was there an attempt to actually 
drive some of those materials up onto the other floors uh, just to have some sort of coordination of the materials. It just looks like a commercial building maximizing the amount of you know, gross retail space, and then let's plonk a residential building on top of it. And to me, that's what it looks like. And it would be better if there was some integration with the materials that coordinated the upper floors with the lower floor so that we don't get this complete stratification of, you know, what's going on here. And uh, simple gestures on the, on, the, on the main floor, like adding canopies that had some color in them or something uh, near the entrances, you know, even if they hang over the sidewalk, which is common practice, you can get an easement for that, um, would be an appropriate way to, to help with this very harsh building that's being developed here. Um, so, you know, the, the attempt to round the corner off on, on uh, you know, with the brick, I think that's nice, but what happens above? Nothing, you know, it, it just stops dead on the first floor. Uh, some parts of the building I think could have been inset a lot more than you've done. And I know it means losing some square footage, but maybe it could have been reclaimed on the back end. I, I'm not 100% sure without, you know, digging into it myself. But um, again, I have to reiterate the entrance thing. I think a building like this, where there's going to be an address that says so and so Craig or so and so Jensen for residential, um, you, you don't highlight or you don't give that entrance the kind of presence that it deserves. Anybody buying a unit in here or renting or whatever deserves to know that there is a presence of their existence on the ground floor, how you get into the building, regardless of the fact that they may know where the back entrance is coming through the parking lot. I just don't think those were clearly or taken to the limit, you know, of really working through it, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I just think there's a lot of stuff missing here. And, you know, I, I really, I really don't like the treatment of the, of the, that's one area that could have been inset to, to as a little bit from Craig Street, you know, instead of having a blank wall, it could have been moved back, I don't know, a couple of feet very easily. It's not gonna take away from the garbage area that much, you know, I mean, the garbage is not gonna be jam packed in that place. So, you know, you could have had a little bit more articulation around that corner, you know, I mean, around that end of the building, but it, um, uh, we, we have no, you know, we started having some canopies on the top of the building and then all of a sudden around this corner, which is a major area where it's very visible, there's nothing, no, no, no uh, relief on the building, very harsh materials going straight up and finishing with, without any kind of uh, transition from the vertical to the horizontal, you know, as we go up the building, what happens when you get to the top? Uh, so, you know, I, I think the attempt on, on the corners is, is a fair attempt at, at doing that, getting that treatment right, you know, but on the corner, um, it's not doing the building a service at all, you know, it's, it's just pretty harsh. Anyway, um, again, you know, I would re re reiterate the, all the other variances that I'm not happy with at all. Maybe the building's just too high. Okay, Marilyn, could you uh, give us some comments? Thank you. Thanks for your presentation. I think the panel has expressed all of my concerns very well, actually. Um, I just want to want to make a few comments though about that one was made that we need housing. We have a substantial amount of housing coming through, forthcoming in Parksville. We have passed a lot of development permits for housing, seniors housing. And one of the things, uh, so um, 
we don't need to overbuild. I think that's really important. Uh, that point has been driven home here on the panel. Uh, that, and I agree, this is an overbuild for the site. Um, it says that uh, I believe in your package that this is for seniors, intended for seniors. Am I correct in that? Targeting seniors. So one of the concerns I would have, well, uh, not only the access in and out, the accessibility issues are huge because we are a senior population, me being one of them. And um, I think two accessible parking spaces for a, for a building that's supposedly targeting seniors is not enough, even though it may meet that accessibility requirement. If you're targeting senior, then I think you have to think about things differently in this building. I would have to agree. It's definitely, um, I'll rely upon our expert panel about how they, um, you know, uh, assess the, the building being overbuilt for the site. And, and, but I do agree, it's very, very tight on the site. And the, the corner, this, this is, a, I'm a big proponent of our downtown revite. I've been pushing for our workshops. So this is a really big issue for me personally um, and how we grow our parks fill. So we've got a lot of development going on coming forth soon. Um, this whole project is, is called a revitalization. It falls under this umbrella for the DPAs. So that means the standards have to be slightly higher and it doesn't mean that uh, it mimics what's on Craig right now because those buildings could be a hundred years old for all I know and they're one story and they're old. And it really, um, that's not the way we're going. We're going in the way our DPA and OCP tells us now, these are the guidelines. So to me, that's a really um, important point to make. Um, some of the, I'm, I'm, I know in our roof lines, another huge problem um, because it does make the building look very utilitarian with a flat roof. And our DPA does state that a minimum of 80% of all roofs in a building up to two and a half stories in height shall have, um, you know, a certain slope and a portion of which should be roof decks. Well, that, the roof deck must, roof must be a combination of flat and gable. So the words shall and must are inner DPA, which basically means they're supposed to be. It's not kind of an option. Um, the fascia trim is recommended to be cedar, metal cap flashing does make that roof line pretty harsh looking, I agree. White, of course, is not part of the, uh, in the DPA as well, as far as our color palette. And I believe it will make it look very stark. You know, and I know that the uh, panel has suggested a way of softening that even, well, it's not for me to say how to do it, but perhaps I, I believe Ian mentioned that, you know, you have the brick there and um, Tony mentioned using the green wall, but there are ways of perhaps integrating or connecting the residential with the commercial on the bottom through the use of the materials, extending those materials, integrating them together. Uh, landscape guidelines, I, I do think that um, that corner, Jensen, it's very visible. It's right across from City Hall. It's a main corridor for us in the downtown. And I think that we need landscape strip there. I, I think to remove that is just far too harsh. And I also see the um, sidewalk on Craig as being actually very unpedestrian friendly. It's, it's um, very narrow and I, I can see that we have lots of people with strollers and bikers and walkers. And uh, to me that, that, uh, that uh, west side looks very, very narrow, very harsh. Um, so Tony let me speak, but thank you for the presentation. And uh, I agree with the panel. So these are just my thoughts and, you know, thank you.
Okay, so I guess we, uh, we now have to kind of formulate some recommendations here. Um, I've just sort of been making a few notes of what everybody had to say and was looking at whether I could perhaps um, get them into a, a grouping. The things that seem to come up to me, if it's all right if I come forward with this, is the height. Um, I guess we could say the density and the resulting um, variances that are looked at for various setbacks. Um, the treatment of the corner, treatment of the entrance, um, whether the variances uh, can be solved by taking a floor off or taking units out in order to fit the site better. Um, materials that have to correspond to our color palette and there's a, a general strong feeling that some of the lower floor materials should extend to the roof to give some continuity and that roof slope should be accommodated into the building. Now that's not everything, but, but that sort of caught a lot of people's <laughs> um, points here. So uh, I think we have to uh, decide how we'd like to address those things. Or is it okay if I just have people contribute now? So what do you think folks? Well, I'm not sure what the exercise is if we start elaborating on each point that you've you know uh, outlined because it seems to me that the project needs to be looked at again mm -hmm. and for us to go through i don't know i'm trying to redesign the building here which which is not our no it isn't you know not, right. not, not particular things or trying to um put a lot of detailed thought into each one of these things when maybe a strategic uh, sort of oversight of the whole building could possibly solve all of these issues that, that are so blatantly obvious, you know? Um, so I, I don't know exactly how we should treat it either. Well, I guess we, um, I mean, we have these five variances that are gonna be part of the, uh, uh, the amended uh, application for the development permit. Um, I guess we could start and correct me if I'm wrong here with, do we accept some, none or all of those variances? Um, because that is put to us. It's a good part of why it was sent to design panel in the first place, I think. Um, go ahead. We have previously asked for resubmissions of, uh, you know, to refine the designs uh, where they've been consensus among among us to uh, you know to, to to make an improvement and uh, conform a little better to 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 the guidelines so so I, I mean we do have the option of just um, saying that we don't recommend that it be approved the way it is and uh, I mean, I think we have to give the reasons for that. Nope. Oh, the, uh, the book, sorry. Yeah. The other one. Yep, too far, too far. Yeah, these are the, uh, the reporting that we can we can do it was much like the matter we went through last time whether did we go ahead and say that we wanted it um, the way it was with with certain changes made or are we in fact sending it back i guess i'm sorry i'm still not on the right page here sarah and i know this section but i can't find it <laughs> should be right on oh, this page here's the the different yeah. general types um but it's useful to have Point out which mm -hmm. guidelines that you have under. So we, we have these options and, and 
I'll go over them again too, but you know, we have accepted as presented uh, with variants accepted as presented, requests for additional information, uh, DP with variants requests for additional information uh, or a request for reconsideration by the panel. And I have a feeling we wanna see this one again. I think it's a number five. Pardon? Because there are there are so many issues. And really, um, you know, Ivan, for example, was against all five of the uh, the variances. Um, I think some of these could be solved with a decreased density. Um, the number of units would probably start to have a, a number of these fall into place. Um, um, I qualify that by saying the height, if, if it, the accommodation was it incorporated within a slope roof that was set back that, uh, you know, yeah. then maybe the height wouldn't be as important uh, an issue. You know, I'm not saying it's yeah. three stories and that's it. I'm just saying that there is a way to soften that, which will then have a knock-on effect for all the other problems that are, that yeah. are being caused by that density. And, and I think that, that that solution that you're talking about would in fact decrease the number of units. It has to, right? Yeah. Because we're already we're full here. There's no opportunities to, uh, to provide slopes within the current form of the building. So, um, so since I haven't been in this position before, um, you've mentioned that we should give uh, with respect to which guidelines. Well, um, certainly number one is height. And And this is one, isn't it? Yeah, so that one covers a lot of the things uh, that we had. Buildings should respond to their location through appropriate heights, forms, setbacks, and architect architectural expression. So we've probably brought all four of those points into, uh, into focus and we could elaborate with some of the things we all agreed on, which were like I was saying, the corners, the entrances, you know, that kind of thing. Sorry, 156. And that would be 1A. Um, 2A is another one, I think, Sarah, visually dominant material should be indigenous natural ones such as wood, stone, and brick. Well, I guess we've got brick and, and wood, so because it's a batten material. So I'll, I'll take that back. Um, Awnings and canopies were mentioned here. And uh, I think that was a good point. So that would be 6A. We're, we'd probably be looking at uh, the form of the building. Um, it's definitely one of the points that was raised. I think 7C, plantings, paving, and seating is encouraged between the public street and the building face. And we know that there's a, a route to reduce that to zero, but I think we're saying that on this particular street, we'd like to see um, 7C as one of the, uh, the items. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit. Uh, 5B. Sloped roofs should be used for mixed-use commercial and residential buildings. And 9A and B are color, and that's the, uh, the palette for Parksville.
I'm not sure how we address accessibility that was raised here a couple of times too. You know, basically 11A accessibility features should be integrated into the overall design. There were a couple of places here that. Uh, well, that's 11A and 11B, mm -hmm. 11C. Um, so I read somewhere that it, there was some attempt to retain rainwater on the site. Is that? Yes, so there's a strategy in place where we will be digging a rock pit, which will be put under the hard and impermeable surface of the parking lot. And so the oil water separator will have an overflow scupper that goes into that rock pit. So if we do have a hundred year storm or something like we've been seeing, we won't add undo or, or burden the existing system. The rock pit, I just put one in Qualicum and it was big. I could have buried a couple dump trucks in there. You bet. It's a, it's a passive way of, of managing and not burdening the system. That's under the impermeable surface. And we're finding that if, if you are trying to use the permeable paver system, eventually they just silt up and then they aren't actually, the water eventually 10 years down the road is just going to flow over top because the silt is going to stop that from working unless you continuously maintain those permeable pavers. So the way, the way that the system works is, it's for the parking area, but also for rainwater leaders. So they're all gonna go into this oil water separator and then they're all gonna flow into the storm system, but you're gonna have the overflow scupper that goes into that rock. How does the overflow get into the storm system? So the, the rock pit is meant to, to um, take the water and, and it passively then filters throughout that rock. pit. And we're talking like 15 feet in the ground by, I think the one that I did in Qualicum was, was about 60 feet by 80 feet by 20 feet in the ground. They're massive with yeah but but it's it's the capacity is is huge no no it goes into the storm sewer if if there is overburden let's say we have a hundred year storm and that's going to burden the storm system that's what goes into this rock pit Yeah, no, no. The scupper goes into the rock pit. The, the rock pit acts as a detention system, basically. It, it does work. While we're looking at that parking lot, and I'm sorry to bring this up late, but is there any provision for um, electric vehicles? Rough in at least? Uh, most definitely. That's the way of the future. So, yeah. There was a drawing, one of the site plans did show the area for the uh, rock pit area on one of one of the site plans. I saw it. What's that? I didn't see it in this package, but yes, we have. No, I thought I saw it on, on the screen. I...
I've, I've had JEA look at it already. This one here? Okay. So in, in no way, shape or form has it been sized. It's just showing strategy. Yeah. It, it will have to be designed by the civil engineer to handle the capacities for the number of years or whatever the criteria is. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Well, I guess we're, we're going to agree then that we're gonna ask, uh, we're gonna request for re reconsideration by the panel um, that we've listed a number of the uh, specifics from, uh, from area one that we would like to see examined. Um, are we good to go with that uh, resolution, Sarah? Yeah, so for um, clarity, could you just read off the development permit area guidelines that you're noting, or did you did you want me to give you my list? Um, okay, you took the, the actual numbered I'm list. Trying so to. yeah. Um, I can do them again too, but uh, so what I had noted was request for reconsideration by the panel um, that you wanted them to re-examine the conformance to the following development permit area guidelines and present revisions to the advisor design panel for further review as follows. Um, 1A. Yes. 1A, which is buildings should respond to their location through appropriate heights, forms, setbacks, and architectural expression that take into consideration adjacency. Um, and then I have 5B. which is uh, roof lines, yes. sloped roofs should be used for mixed use commercial residential buildings and multiple unit residential buildings. Um, I also have noted 6A, which is awnings and canopies yes. should be integrated into the overall architectural design of the building. Um, I have noted 7C, which is landscaping and screening, plantings, paving and seating is encouraged between the public street and the building face. Um, then I have noted 9A and B, which relate to the use of colors. Yes. And development permit area guidelines 1 or 11A, B, and C as they relate to overall accessibility. Can I just interject, Sarah? Yes. Um, I believe I saw 2A. It was 2A was mentioned. Actually, I brought it up and then I think I, I said the materials actually did conform. Sorry about that. Yeah. It was the wood, stone, and brick, and uh, they, they were the dominant materials. Yeah, sorry, Marilyn. So yeah, that's my list too. That's what uh, what I had. So that would be our recommendation to uh, to come back to us and address those uh, those issues. So um, I guess I need someone to move that, don't I? Sorry. Agree. Yeah. Yes, he's right, 3F, I missed that one. That's the entrances and the definition. Okay. So that being the case and requesting for a reconsideration, can somebody move that for me? Ivan? And Ian is seconding. Yes. So could somebody move, we adjourn the meeting, please? Gladly, I adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Thank Seconded you. Seconded by Ivan. All right, thanks everybody.